And I was like, you know what? I'm not scared anymore. I got up one day, I was like, I don't want to do anything else. And you know what? I set out to be the best in the world. Me versus Haggerty. Like, everyone's going on about it. And I get it. Because we're two, like, complete strikers. And we're going to meet. It, it really fucked me mentally because I was one step ahead. Because one was like, if you do well, one more win, you might get a title shot. When I was six, I was like, I wouldn't do this. I was so shy. Now I just go and I'm like standing in front of 50 people and it's just, it's just normal, you know? Like when I was six, I was really shy. And then I hated training because I was so weak. I was just naturally like super weak. I would walk in the gym and then I was sparring the younger kids. And like, I remember I was scared of the girls because they were just naturally stronger than me. And then over the years, I kind of like, you know, like, I was just going to the gym, going, I was scared, but I just kind of had this consistency. I was like, stick to it. And I, I enjoyed it, but I was scared of it. But I just kept showing up. Over the years, I kind of like, saw like, you know, it's working, you know, and I enjoy it. I would like, kind of take a month break, and I was like, I don't like anything else. And then I would go back to the gym. As I was growing older, like, injuries started being a part of it, like my shins. And then I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like it. Like the injuries were like, kind of like paying a toll on me. So when I was getting injured, I was like, oh, do I like it? And then I'll take a step back, go to school, live a normal life. And then when I was in school, I was kind of like, as I said, I was a shy kid. And I was observing like, you know, the, what everybody was doing. When I would see all the kids, I was like, oh, I don't like none of this. I was constantly thinking like, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, I wanna go in the gym, go home, watch YouTube, look at Muay Thai. And I was like, wow, I really like this. So then when I was 11 years old, like I traveled to Thailand on a trip to like the World Championships, amateur cham World Championships. And then when I was there, like my trainer took me on a trip to Lumpini. I went to Lumpini Stadium and I walked in and the atmosphere in there was like hectic. I was just walked in, it was like, wow. Like my hair still go up when I feel it. And I was like, wow, this is what I want to do, you know? I really, was, something really like brought me alive when I was there. So I came to Cyprus when I was 11 and then I was like to my mom, you know, mom, like this is what I want to do, mom. Like nothing else matter no more you know like I really want to go to the island live the dream and this is what I wanted to do so over the years I was going to Thailand every year coming back and then the first injury and it, it was actually kind of recent it was only four years ago is when I when I dislocated my elbow against Lerdzilla so is when I signed to one championship I had my first fight with one big platform, got the win with Sing Tanoi. A lot of a lot of hype behind my name started building up. I never really cared about hype because I knew this is what I want to do. So I was always kind of like tunnel vision. The hype never mattered. I never cared about people's opinion, even if it was good or bad. I just didn't care. I was just like too focused. And then for the Lerdzila fight, oh, it broke my heart because a lot of people don't know this, but like, I never really show my true potential. John Watt, my trainer, he's, he's something else. Like, he analyzes everything. So for that fight, I went crazy. Like, oh, I trained like seven hours a day for two months. Round two happens, he lifted me up. And as he sweeps, I put my hand and I dislocated my elbow. And my elbow was kind of popping out and I was in a lot of pain and then it, it really fucked me mentally because I was like, wow, like I was one step ahead 
Because one was like, if you do well, one more win, you might get a title shot. And you know, back then I was like, oh wow, already so close. You know, just dreaming, you know. And then as I did so game, my elbow was like, it's like, it lifted me up and then boom, to the floor. And then when I got to the floor, I was like, oh, time to re, re-plan everything. So I went back home. Because I was living in Thailand, you know, living in Thailand, you're like, in Thailand, you know, it's like, you kind of like, you're in tunnel vision all the time. So you kind of like, you're living the dream, but you're going crazy too, you know? You love it, but I don't know, when you're there, you kind of hate it too. Because it's like, it's too hard. The lifestyle, like, you really miss out on like a normal life. In Thailand, it's like, you gotta be training, winning, eat, sleep, train, you're always losing weight, you're always fighting. So when I got injured, I was like, oh, I was like nearly at the top, dislocated my elbow, went home. But then with my friends and family, you know, cause I was with them, I, I felt loved again, you know, I was like, you know, they were coming over, we were having fun. I was having a beer whenever I wanted for two months, ordering pizza, you know, it was, it seems, really simple but it's something you know when you don't have it for a few years you're like wow what normal life can do to you so then quick when i was with them after a week my psychologist just went up and then i was like cool let's get back into recovery having fun at the same time and then it went by really quick two months later i was with ajan in thailand and then we're like ajan was like all right self was like you know you you need a month now to get used to not being scared of getting injured. So at Janwad, I, re- I go there, first training. Uh, he started throwing me all over the ring. Oh, and I was, re- so I was going to training and I was like, scared, you know, and Ajan was lifting me up, boom, boom, boom. And then I was like, pulling my hand. And I was like, you know what? I'm not scared anymore. I got up one day, I was like, I don't want to do anything else. And you know what? I set out to be the best in the world. And then I went, my mindset became bulletproof. A month later, I had the WBC world title. Won that by knockout round four. And then my next fight, it was crazy, so my next fight was on one again against Taiki Naito. I uh, trained really hard for that. I really wanted to give a good fight again. Round one, first punch, boom, I break, break my bone in my hand. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna go crazy, so I switched off my like fight IQ and I was just going mental. So I destroyed it even more. After the fight, I lost the fight, but I realized that I broke my hand. And I was devastated and like my good friend Daniel, like I've seen him go through all that and then COVID hit and then the whole world shut down. And I was like, oh shit, like I'm going to need surgery. And I was like, I'm going to go back to Cyprus. Same thing, family, surgery, restart. So then my Thai trainer came back and then when my Thai trainer came, it was kind of like, being home with my loved ones, training hard. One thing I loved it was like, I didn't have to worry about fighting. It was just kind of like worrying about my technique, falling in love with the game again. So I was kind of like, just focus on me, you know, growing as a fighter. And that's how I kind of like, think I involved, you know, living in Thailand five years compared to being one year in training with my Thai trainer. I evolved 360 degrees than five years in Thailand. And just because of my psychology, I kind of like grew as a fighter in Thailand, like built that bulletproof mentality and kind of Thailand humbled me to enjoy my family. So then here I am now and like I'm healed. I feel like we're, we're more dangerous now because we had to overcome this, you know, like living in Thailand, missing family, getting injured, falling in and out of love when I die. And then just feel like we love the sport so much, we kind of just dive into it. So like now, like kind of broke her heart. You know, it's like, you know when you love a girl, you love her so much, right? And then you, you give it all. 
and then you just breaks your heart. And then you like you take a step back and you're like, oh shit, you know, I could have done that. It's the same thing. I love it like I love it as much as I love anything on this world. So it's like it's it's the same feeling. So for fall in, take a step back, look, rebuild, level up. It's the same thing. Look at Muay Thai, like, look how many good fighters we are. Every month, you know, you can go now to Thailand and probably get, I'd be in the stadiums and like, rank number seven, you might be 16 years old and it would give me the hardest life, fight of my life. So, there's fighters coming out of everywhere, you know, and it's just a sport. And now we're in a cage, small gloves. Imagine putting two lethal Muay Thai fighters. Let's say like me versus Haggerty, like, Everyone's going on about it, and I get it, because we're two like complete strikers, and we're gonna meet in a cage, four ounce gloves, and we're just gonna go give it all, you know. And like it's a complete war, you know. It's like it's it's a dream come true to everyone, complete fighters. Finally, I'm surrounded by like great fighters all day, you know. I know their stories. I know you know everyone has their own story, and like, and I know everyone deserves better, and like. I just want to be part of like the growth of Muay Thai. But for now, I want to go back to Thailand and just focus on the stadiums and being a stadium champion. I want to live that. I don't want to retire and keep keep that in my past. You know, I want to, don't want to be 40 years old and be like, oh, you know, like I could have done it. I'll be like, you know what? I did it. You know, like I made it possible. I dreamed it, it happened. I want to win the one belt. Why not? You know, I can do it. So I'm, I'm ready to sacrifice the next six years, accomplish all my goals, and just take it from there. You know, I don't want to look too much. You know, maybe who knows? I love boxing. I could jump into boxing. I just love fighting. So I'm just, I'll be a part of it no matter what. If you truly want to do this, do it. If your parents are doubting you or your friends or like anyone, like obviously you're not going to believe in yourself. Like you're listening to them, but if you have that feeling inside, like you know, like. I want to do this, like, I'm, I'm really, but like, truly believe it. Just go ahead and do it and just close your ears. Just make it happen. But like, if deep down you're like, it's your ego that wants it, it's not your true self, then just listen to yourself. Your gut instinct is real. Like, someone who wants to be a barber, it's not bad, be a barber. Someone who loves, you know, people like, I met a guy, his passion is making burgers. If that's his passion. You can't, you can't take away from, you can't take it away from him. So just follow like what you truly want to do. Just believe in yourself. I have nothing else to tell. Like if you want it, you're gonna get it.